All right, we're going to talk about basically one of our uh, special triangles. Now, uh, 45, 45, 90, you guys studied this in geometry, so hopefully it won't be too different. Uh, you can see uh, we have 45 angle, 45 angle, 90 angle, 90 degree angle. What you should know is all three of these angles have to be, um, have to add up to give us a 180 because they are the interior angles of a triangle. And what you should know is anytime you have a 90 degree angle, these two angles have to be uh, complements of each other. So they have to add together to give us 90. Keep that in mind because when we come down here and we study the co-function of complementary angles, which we'll look at here in just a second, uh, you'll see the relationship. Well, one thing I know is that anytime these two angles are the same, the sides across those two angles have to be the same. So this is basically an isosceles triangle. All right. Now in geometry, what you've done is you've studied this as x, x, and x times the square root of 2. Well, we do pretty much the same stuff. It's just in trig, instead of using variables like that, we actually use numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this side is 1, 1, and then the square root of 2. Now, uh, on this, that doesn't mean that the sides have to be that length. This could easily be 5, 5, 5 times the square root of 2, or this could be 2, the square root of 2, and the square root of 2. So it doesn't mean that the sides are that uh, length all the time. What it means is anytime you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, that the sides will always fall into these ratios that we're about to find. So for starters, the sine. To find the sine, you're going to take the uh, nice little, well, for starters, we need to figure out what our reference angle is. Well, in this triangle, it really doesn't matter. You can pick either one because, uh, as you can see, the angles are going to be the same. So we'll just use that one. So we'll say the opposite side's 1, the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. When you multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2, you get the square root of 2 over 2. All right, fantastic. Cosine of your angle, 45 degrees, is going to be the adjacent side, square root of 2. And when you rationalize it, you get the square root of 2 over 2. The tangent is opposite over adjacent, so you get 1 over 1, which of course is 1. Now, cosecant, when we're finding cosecant, what we're going to do is we're going to just take the reciprocal of sine. Now, we could take this and take the reciprocal, but then we will get basically a uh, nice little uh, fraction that we need to rationalize. So we might as well just take this one. So let's just take the original one, because these two things are equal. So we're just going to take it and take the reciprocal of that. So it's the square root of 2 over 1, which is the square root of 2. And then we'll do the same thing here, square root of 2 over 1, which is the square root of 2. And lastly, the cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of 1 over 1, which is still going to be 1 over 1, which is 1. Now, uh, as you can see from our nice little uh, sine, cosine, and tangent, that um, the sine and cosine are the same, and the reason they're going to be the same is because these two sides have equal values. So kind of keep that in mind because, yeah. And the other thing is, you know, no matter what, like say, uh, say these sides are 10, 10, and 10 times the square root of 2. Then what you're going to have is you're going to have 10 over 10, which is still going to simplify down to 1. So what that basically says is no matter how big or how small the triangles are, that these ratios will always simplify down to these fractions whenever your angle is 45 degrees.